Welcome back, city builders. Kodiak the Kodiak here. Today's video is going to be a little different as we're not going to be talking about City Skylines 2. Today, we're going to be talking about a new game that's coming out soon that I have been lucky enough to get early access to, and that's Manor Lords. Now, while today's video isn't going to be featuring any gameplay, you can actually find some of that over on my live tab. I'll leave a link to that live stream where I was playing the game for the first time on stream up in the annotations right now. You can also head over to my Twitch stream where I'm live quite a bit more often, where we've been playing Manor Lords over there as well. And you can ask me directly what my thoughts and opinions are of the game. That being said, Manor Lords is a game that is being developed by one singular person. His name is Greg. <laughs> And today, Greg published a post over on Steam that is a few words from him about the game before the launch into early access on the 26th. Now, I'll have some videos breaking down different gameplay aspects in the coming days here. Those are actively being worked on in the background and is why my channel has been a little slow lately. But I think that this developer post is really important to break down. It contains a lot of great information about the game, as well as some insights into this single developer's passion project that he's pursued for the past seven years. It's a fantastic game, and after reading this post, it showed me that he is also a fantastic developer with an amazing head on his shoulders. So today's video is going to be a cut down portion of my Twitch stream where I actually broke down his post live on stream. We went over everything that he talked about, essentially like I do with my normal developer diary videos that I do for City Skylines. I also provide some other insights insights from his other platforms like Twitter to really fully embrace what he's trying to say and show that he's been incredibly consistent in these opinions. The most primary one is that he wants you to be as aware as possible before buying the game. He's not trying to sell you a product that's subpar and make a cash grab. He really wants you to know what kind of game Manor Lords is before you buy it. Now, before we get started, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and do not forget to turn on notifications, so that way you don't miss my upcoming Manor Lords videos. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, this was a post from the developer of Manor Lords. Hey, everyone. It's been quite a journey so far, but it won't stop on April 26th. During development, the core tester group was around 130 people, given popularity to the game. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a wave of feedback that I will need to address after launch. I wanted to address a few things for everyone who is intended on buying the game on April 26th. Now, before I read the rest of this, I do want to clarify that the developer did state on Twitter, so let's actually go to the Manor Lords Twitter, because I think this is going to be entirely relevant to this thing. So I want to preface what I'm about to read with this already pre-made statement that the developer had made prior to making this. This person was very frustrated that uh, content creators had so many days before launch to be able to play the game, right? So the de the developer responded and said, the idea is that I also wanted to see how the, or I wanted people to see how the gameplay looks. True gameplay with pros and cons. So like from content creators. So that players can make the right judgment when they click buy on the 26th, especially since it's in early access. And based on all of the other language that I've heard from this single developer, it seems like he's very aware of how much hype is behind the game. And he's almost trying to quell it down a little bit because he's it feels like he's like ahead of the curb in that a lot of people are expecting a lot of different things from this game and a lot of different directions right like a lot of people are really excited about combat and a lot of people are really excited about logistical management of their their city and then some people are really excited about the city builder and like visual fidelity of the game right and like while not a lot of it is implemented yet it does seem like the combat is just kind of like a thing that's there and not really like a core element. Like it is a core element for expansion, but like the you spend very little time doing combat in this game. And like, while it has really cool features, like the whole like spreading your army out, um, different battle stances, like there is cool combat mechanics. It's very clearly not like a, uh, a big element of the game. And so um, that's something that I've kind of been like, hey, just so you guys know, like, that's not really what the game is. It's, it's more like it's like a city builder, right? Like, that's really what it is. Town builder. And this goes alongside this. Like, he's very clearly, like, aware that the game's kind of got, like, an unrealistic amount of hype for, like, all the different varieties of the game. And as a single person, there's only so much he can do. And there's only so many directions that he can take a single game, right? If he makes some things too complex, it's more development time as a single person, right? So, and, like, he already has freelancers and stuff like that. So, like, I, I, I appreciate, like, 
obviously I'm one of the lucky ones who obviously has early access, but I appreciate that he is trying to be like, I don't want you to buy the game unless you're sure you like it. And so that's why I wanted content creators to have so much time talking about it to their communities. So people are very aware of what they're buying before they buy it. And I think that that's really awesome. I think that that's really awesome. And I think that this is probably going to, and, and that's, that's basically what this whole post is. So uh, what this game is not, Manor Lords is not a Total War competitor. It is a city builder with battles. Yes, battles are there, but not as huge or as frequent as some of you might expect, which is something that I've said quite a bit to you guys, right? The majority of gameplay is focused on city building and management. For the reference, I haven't read this yet. I don't know what he's gonna say in this, which is true. It is definitely a lot on city building. It's not an empire management style grand strategy game either. The map has regions, but you won't be able to conquer the whole Europe. Or, yeah, you won't be able to conquer Europe. Uh, nor have marriages or anything like that. The game is designed to play as a, at a much smaller scale. And it is. It, I, I said this before when I was playing the game. I'm like, there, there is some element of this where it feels more like a roguelike. It feels like you're not really meant to play the game on one save that long. Right, it feels like a much smaller scale, chill city builder where like you play it kind of different every single time based on the map that you're playing, right? Because we're, we're we only have the early access map which has nine regions, but we don't know what other maps are gonna look like, um, or how easy they're gonna be to make. If there's gonna be a map maker, we don't have that yet. I don't know if that's a game plan yet for this developer either. But there's very clearly like a map selection screen, so it's not an RPG either. If you played uh, KCD, I I don't know. is that Kingdom Come Deliverance? which the game does feel like when you're walking around in first person, or Mountain Blade, Manor Lords is a different type of game. There is a, uh, a visit mode in Manor Lords which allows you to walk around your town, but it's an experimental cosmetic bonus feature. The game is really meant to be played from the bird's eye perspective, which it is very much meant to be, but I think that the, the first person mode is honestly kind of, or the third person, I guess, is very like immersive. Like I feel like it's part of the whole experience, but it's like an added part, right? Um, like a strategy game almost always should be, which makes sense. Yeah. Bird's eye view should be. Yeah. There won't be any first person gameplay. Uh, I'm sure somebody will come out with a first person mod. I have a feeling it's going to happen. <laughs> um, it's not competitive, fast paced RTS, like age of empires or Starcraft. A lot of the game mechanics focus on aesthetics of your town and resources take some time to be transported around the map. Yeah. It is a very slow game. It is a very slow game. This results in a much more of a relaxed experience, which it is, especially with the high visual fidelity and with high intense moments, spicing up the atmosphere of city building rather than the game being high intensity all the time, right? Like a total war or anything else. It must be disappointing, but I think it's the right choice. It's my first serious game. And not only is some stuff still unfinished, but I bet you guys will ask me to change some things you don't necessarily like. And he, this dude is like very active in, from a community like listening perspective. He was doing polls after the first demo to try to change like what he was doing in terms of development. So like he wants people's feedback as long as they give it respectfully. Uh, but I want to pursue an open development strategy of the back and forth between me and you. And that's very clear to me following this entire development of this game. I think it worked great for the game so far. I'm comparing times where there wasn't even a testing group uh, and I was developing in a bubble, which, you know, after the demo, that's all very clear to me. The, the, he, he wants that back and forth feedback, right? Like he built the game based on what he thinks people will like and what he likes. And now he's has content creators giving him feedback too and the communities are like also saying things that look like it and then once the game's out i bet you he's just gonna sit and compile things for a while before like maybe like jumping to fix things that aren't bugs more like banished than total war yeah i've compared it to banished quite a bit wieners um i've compared this game quite a bit to banished it is very much like banished if banished allowed you to build more organically rather than a grid-based system yeah if you liked banished you will like this game you should get this game if you like banished that's how i feel about it the publisher and i recently shared the game with content creators all over the world hey that's me i have i'm one of those people feel free to check out the numerous streams and let's plays out there before buying to make sure the game's right for you like this one right now Wow, very cool. That said, the reception has been super positive so far, uh, for which I'm grateful. I think the game should find a way into the hearts of players who expect Manor Lords to be what it is, a realistic, organic, authentic city builder with real-time battles. Roadmap. 
I do not plan on releasing a roadmap yet. I've made a mistake once or twice before of promising and working on a feature only to find out that the testers didn't care as much as I did and they actually wanted something else. Which I, I, I mean, I do that in my videos too, where like I promise a mod video and then like I see all the other content creators already have mod videos up and I'm like, I don't even think my community needs or wants this at this point. And so I go do something else, right? And so it's like, I've, I've started to do that myself. So I empathize with him in this side of things where it's like, yeah, I need to like not promise things <laughs> ahead of time. Um, which is cool. That's growth. That's great. This guy already has like a, like for this being his first game has like amazing head on his shoulders in terms of like how to take this game in terms of development. So even if I have a plan, I want to adopt the philosophy of listen, verify, implement. This way I can uh, expect the first month of patches to be just bug fixes and polish, which is what I literally just said. Um, during that time, together with Hooded Horse, we'll be collecting your feedback and then prioritizing work based on what we hear, which is exactly what I thought based on everything this guy has done so far. Um, I'm still considering whether to keep the testing of future patches closed or open. My current idea is to have an open pre-release beta branch so that everyone who owns the game can check out and test the most recent pre-release unstable version of the game and contribute if they want to. I think that's a great idea. Um, I like Satisfactory does that as well, and I think that that goes really well for people too. It makes it feel like the updates aren't as big though. Right? Like when a satisfactory update drops, it's like, man, I could have been playing that on the, I could have been playing that already. You know what I mean? Um, I think that stuff like that is really good for modders though. Right? If you, if this guy does plan on having mods, which he has said on his discord, um, for the game that he wants to implement modding features after 1.0, I think that that's going to be very, very, uh, important that like those modders have the ability to be up to date on like what's going to break and stuff like that. Um, and then and keeping the main branch uh, as the previous most stable version. Though, let me know. Maybe you prefer an unstable version to be a closed testing group. I don't know if I want that. I, I think making it open allows for more bugs to get discovered. I think it's I think it's a good idea, especially if he's like such an open developer, like with communicating to the community and wants community feedback. I feel like it would be that would be like the opposite way to go. I think. As always, thank you for following and all the support. I'll certainly keep up the updates more frequently here once the early access officially starts. Have a good one, Greg. I mean, great. Super great. Rate up. I've never done that on a post before. I guess I guess we're going to rate we're going to rate that one up. Yeah, W. Yeah, for sure, Moose. Uh, this is uh, a really good post. Really good post. It was clear, it was concise. Um it, it was very relatable. No confusing language. Uh, for one dude like pursuing a passion project for seven years and like him saying that this is his first game maybe he plans on making more after this i don't know but this is great 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 stuff